Good morning. Welcome to another edition of AC with Wacy. Um, kind of a chillier morning this morning and had to start the truck to try to thaw out the windshield. So I thought as, as I was uh, letting that warm up, I would do a short video um, on zoning. I've had a few questions this week about different zone systems and uh, and I get them a lot on new construction stuff. So if you're not familiar with zoning, zoning is basically breaking your house into parts and having different controls for different areas to where the air turns on in one area or the other area. Uh, this can be done a couple of different ways. Uh, one way is to have electronic dampers that are given power to uh, turn on or off one area or the other. Uh, another way would be to have separate units for each different area. Um, I'll try to do some videos here shortly on, I've got a, what's called a multi-split uh, system to where I've got multiple indoor units for one outdoor unit. That's one way to zone. Um, another way is to just have separate smaller systems for each area. And then one of the ways that you see a lot is by doing uh, different dampers for uh, each area and uh, see if I can figure out how to turn my camera around. I can't, so we'll just do it this way. Uh, so this here is a zone damper. As you see down in the bottom, there's this part which turns. This particular damper uh, is a power, let's see what it is power open or power closed damper so basically your dampers have that on the front where it gets power it will either power close or it will power open or it will power open and power close uh, a lot of the newer high efficiency uh, zone systems will have a um, what's called a modulating damper system to where it can come part way open or part way closed and give you the exact amount of air that you need in a given area. Um, as far as whether or not we think zoning is a good idea, because I get asked that a lot. Um, zoning will increase the efficiency of a system if you are on a two speed or a variable speed system. In other words, it comes back to design again. A lot of these things that we talk about come back to either proper installation or proper design. Um, so if you have a single speed 14, 15 series, 16, most 16 series systems are single speed and you zone it, I am not a fan. Um, so basically your 14, 15, 16 series single speed systems, your low efficiency systems, they come on, they come off. They, they run at a hundred percent or they run at nothing. So basically if you have your house split into thirds let's say and uh, one third comes on you're feeding a hundred percent of your air for a third of your house uh, now what what people do with those systems and how they were done for years before we had two speed and variable speed is they would uh, they would essentially have another damper of uh, that would work on pressure or work on temperature and bypass air from the return side to the, or from the supply side to the return side. So what this does is if you're in the cooling, you're pumping, I'll uh, say your house is 70 degrees, you have 50 degree air, you'll pump 50 degree air back in with the 70 degree air that's coming into the unit. If that runs for very long, that temperature continues to drop, and all of a sudden, instead of putting out 50 degree air, you're putting out 40 degree air, or 30 degree air, or 20 degree air, and it can freeze a coil. Now, there are temperature sensors that you can install in these that will keep that damper from coming open once the air gets too cold. But then you're back to the problem of running 100% of your air through 30% of your system, or 35% of your system. Um, the other thing that happens with these is one zone shuts off, the next one turns on, the unit either doesn't turn off at all or it shuts off for a brief period and then fires right back up and, and short cycles. Um, really, short cycles are really hard on your units in general. Um, 
whether it's whether it's the compressor or the fan motors or everything's getting a little bit of hit electricity and getting hit with freon when it shuts down and it's just not good short cycle um but uh but anyways the the other thing that you deal with with the uh, zone systems if they're not properly set up is because you're feeding such cold air back and getting such cold air out is it cools an area really really quickly if you're on single speed and that isn't always conducive to taking out humidity so you end up with worse air in your home than you would on a normal system a two-speed system is slightly better. Usually two-speed systems are set up to where they run 33% of your air or 100% of your air. So just having it able to step back to that 33% allows it to kind of set itself up to be a little more successful, not, not, go, through as many, uh, not go through as many pressure problems and uh, do a little better on dehumidification, stuff like that. Um, if I do a zone system, the minimum requirement that I, I require people to do is do a two-speed system. I would prefer that you do a variable speed system. A variable speed system, um, quick definition on that. I have people tell me all the time that they have a variable speed system when what they have is a variable speed air handler. Your indoor unit is not what I'm referring to. Most indoor units today are a variable speed air handler. Uh, most of them have an ECM or a variable speed motor to where the, the airflow changes. Uh, the outdoor compressor is what I'm talking about. I want, I want the outdoor compressor to be able to say, hey, I need 25% of my refrigerant flow or I need 30% of my refrigerant flow or I need 65% of my refrigerant flow. And I want them to be able to set up the refrigerant flow and the fan motor for whatever zone is running. Um, obviously these systems are quite a bit more expensive. The zoning and the fan motor or the zoning and the dampers and everything gets pretty more expensive. The boards that go into them get more expensive and what you end up with is a a really high cost that really a lot of the time I find in most custom homes, I would rather accomplish with separate systems. Uh, there's downsides to using separate systems as well. You have more equipment, so that 10, 15, 20 years down the road, when you start having problems with equipment, you got more equipment to change. Uh, whether or not, I mean, that equipment's probably gonna be cheaper too, but you don't have zone dampers, you don't have zone boards, all of these things. Uh, it's really a balancing act and really determining what you would rather do. Uh, me personally, I, I think that I prefer to do smaller systems and do multiple systems. The custom home that we're going to start today, um, I'll have videos on its rough end next week. That way you can see what a typical rough end looks like. But the one that we're unloading all of the equipment at and starting prep on today has three systems. Um, it was going to have to have two regardless, but one area could have been one system. We decided to go with uh, two smaller ones just to uh, better serve the house, and I'll explain why in that particular case. But, but uh, anyways, we split it up into three systems so that each area has its own control, but it also has its own speed, it has its own dehumidification. We're not worried about it feeding back and short cycling and and all of these different areas and having to mix air and all of that stuff. So uh, anyways, that's kind of my thoughts on zoning. Like I said, I had had a couple of questions this week. Uh, I did a couple of home designs for some people this week on their, on their duct work and almost every one of them asked about zoning. Uh, and we kind of went through this whole spiel. So I thought I would put a video out there and and maybe help with that a little bit in the future as far as uh, people that go and uh, pick up the information first. Maybe they'll have a better idea of what I'm talking about and uh, shorten my conversations. Anyways, I appreciate you all stopping by, and we'll probably catch you next time.